Mustafa, 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 Mustafa. Rahim. Just want to continue our journey of learning how to purify our organs and this is a process that doesn't just finish with the organs it is a full holistic approach of body mind heart and soul and this is a four-stage process which we inshallah started um, telling you about yesterday and we will inshallah continue now so you are fully aware of this process of self-purification and what amals, what things you need to do on a practical basis to ensure that you become purified. And as I was saying earlier, there is a, a scientific formula, a plan, a practical methodology which works, it's tried and tested, uh, it's not just a theory that will help you to purify yourself and to tell you more about this, I will hand over to Ustad Saraj Mahmood, who will continue part two of the session that he started yesterday. So over to Ustad Saraj Mahmood. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, Salatu wa Salam, wa ala Sayyid al Anbiya wa al Mursaleen, wa ala Alihi wa Ashabihi Ajma'een, Amma Abad. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I'd just like to put you all in a quick scenario just to get your, your mind working. <coughs> so just imagine uh, someone has given you a responsibility to transport a million pound cash or a jewel worth a million pound. Okay? So they've given you a van, they've given you a million pound or a jewel worth a million pound and they said here's the keys, now I need you to take this to say for example London or I need you to take this for example to a different country, Pakistan, India, okay? Now you know the worth of this million pound in your, in your van, now the only problem you've got is you, you cannot drive you cannot drive. So you've got the key, you've got the van, you've got the million pound. So first of all, you can't even run off with it. Second of all, you can't even drive. So now think, what are you going to do? So you've, got, you've been given a destination that this needs to reach London. Okay, the, the, the objective is just to reach London. So now think, what, what would you do? You can even discuss it. Discuss it, what would you do? So I'll give you a minute, just discuss it. So everyone's got the idea, I don't need to repeat it, do I? <laughs> Come on, it's a bit quiet in that corner, I'm sure there's a bit of discussion can go on there. Not me, not me, not me. Discuss next to each other. I think on the live one more or less looks like they've they've got a plan. Uh, I think this side looks ready, this side's still a bit <laughs> okay, so inshallah, we're going to come back now. We've had your chance now to make your plan. So, so this side looked like, you know, they're actually planning something. This side looked like they plan to keep it. <laughs> okay, so we'll start off with these because they finished first. So, um, so anyone want to suggest from this side first? And then your hands up, everyone's got smiles on their face. Come on, brother, mashallah. Say your name first, what's your name? My name is Joel. 
Jawad Nakesh. Can we just have silence on this side now, Jazakallah? And I think there's probably going back to options. I okay. just want to drive the van. Okay. Or um, uh, you can learn how to drive yourself before you actually take the journey. Right, okay. Okay, no problem. That's fine. That's a very good idea. Any more from this side? Any more? No? Are we happy with that from this side? Remember it. You know. Marshall will get a Western Union. Yeah, mashallah. <laughs> mashallah. Mashallah. Go on with the question. Yeah. Give us a solution yeah. to uh, our problem. We, we, have, uh, we have actually discussed a few options. Uh, one mashallah. of them was that uh, we should find one who could drive instead. Okay. Okay, okay. And um, the other one was also that uh, we will find a bank and transfer the money instead. Okay, mashallah. Yeah. So, from what Brother Kaj saying, some reliable source. You know, someone you can trust. Yeah, A bank or a good driver, you know, so you don't have to go through the hassle of having that much cash or that, that jewel with you. Anything from that side, anything different. You can't copy them ideas, by the way, so you have to have your own. It has to be unique. Malcolm. Uh, we discussed that uh, if we knew somebody who's been there before, somebody that we can trust and uh, to take them with us on the journey. Okay. And now that that's one thing you've decided, so is that you need someone reliable. So same answer from this side and that side. Either you need someone reliable or you need someone who knows the way who or can drive the vehicle. Okay. So we agree upon that. Now the second is, what I want to ask is, what kind of route are you going to take? Should come to your mind. What kind of route are you going to take? So anyone can answer that. Anyone. So one is you've got your driver. You know, so one brother, Mashallah, Brother Kashif mentioned a route. You know, through bank, through the bank. Uh, brother Kashif, actually pass it to Brother Kashif. I want to ask him why would you have used the option of a bank? Uh, the reason why I will use the bank because there is so many maybe dangerous on the road, first of all, and uh, the other one is that the uh, bank is uh, trustworthy, reliable, as you mentioned, and uh, and it's also one of the easy uh, actions to do, uh, so we don't have any concern left. You know that it's uh, it's gonna be delivered um, according to. Uh, the law or what you can say. Okay. So, mashallah, he's, he's answered the question. So, three things we've got there from everyone's discussion is, one is, you know, if you're gonna, if you're gonna trust someone else to drive it, then they need to be a reliable, you know, a reliable source. You want to transport it as safe as possible and you want to get there as quick as possible. Three things we've got there. Now, the reason why I asked you this is, going back to what we've been learning, is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us a jewel which is worth hundred times more than a million pound or a diamond. That is our spirit. We've got this jewel, this freedom of will. The spirit has got this jewel, the freedom of will. Okay, this is a jewel Allah ta'ala has given us. Such a priceless product that we've got. Now our job as we've been taught is, is to transport this. And three things which you mentioned is we need a reliable source, a teacher, a guide, okay? And we want to do it in the safest and quickest way. So this journey now that we're gonna go through is your safest and quickest way to go back to that kingdom, or to transport this jewel back to where it's come from. So you've been given this imana, this trust, this freedom of will, okay? We came here, Allah Ta'ala said, okay, here's, here's this trust, here's this will, and the vehicle that we've been trusted with to transport it is this that we have. This body, this mind, this heart. This is the vehicle. Okay, this is the different layer of the vehicle. So now our job is to just transport this back to where it came from or where we've been asked to transport it. So like yourselves know, you've told me, I've not told you, that you need something reliable, safe and quick. So this is that methodology now we're gonna go into which is going to provide that for us. So now this is why it's very important, very important that you try to concentrate as much as possible. And that's why I'm going to keep on it because this is, this is the main thing you take away. This is your fundamental. This is your base for everything. You know, I'm the lot of you brothers have been traveling spiritually. You know, you've been feeling this closeness to Allah's power, this presence. This is what's going to carry on that experience out of here. The reason why we're having here is number one, 
Alhamdulillah, it's a blessed, it's the house of Allah. Number two, we've got the mashaykh with us, you know, through their affairs and through the company, it's having an effect on us. But as soon as the shaitans are back out, as soon as Eid hits, you know, it's going to be shaitans Eid as well. Because who's he going to target? He's not going to target those people who've already planned to go Wimslow Road or who've already planned to go meet this person or that person. He's already, they're done for already. He's going to target you people. Because you spent the time how you're supposed to spend it. And these big shaitans, they're, they're going crazy in their, in their cells right now. So as soon as they get out, they want to have you. They want to take you out of the game straight away. So this is your plan of action. This is your plan of action. This is what's going to make you survive on the streets out there against the shaitan. So this is why it's very, these are, you could say, your tools, your weaponry. This is what's going to protect you. So it's very important that, number one, we listen attentive. Number two, we understand what we're doing. And right then, when you give your practical steps, that from now, from this day onwards, here we try to practice them day in day out to get, because this, in this environment, it's very easy. So if we can get into routine now, then all is just a matter of following on after that. Okay, so inshallah, before I go on to delivering the rest of the presentation, I just want to do a recap of what we went through yesterday. So, first we had two mountains, two mountains, and every eye has to stay this way, okay? Eyes, thank you very much for pointing that out yesterday, but everyone's eyes need to stay here, so as soon as you look there, if I see one of them, it's not count your answer's not counted, so eyes, all eyes on me, we've heard that line before, all eyes on me, okay? So, right, what I want you to do now is, one mountain, so I'm going to ask this area, there's one mountain, Outside. Okay, it doesn't matter, I'll just say so. One mountain, there has four things on it. There's four four things on there. And you can choose either of the two. So there's two mountains, one I'm going to give to this side. Go on, so four people need to answer. Uh, a belief. Okay, so, right, just before, so you said belief. So which mountain have you chose there? Well, what's it called? Preconditions. Okay, preconditions of what? Okay, mashallah, mashallah. Okay, so you said belief. Okay, mashallah, you mentioned belief. So, can another brother explain on this side what does he mean by belief? What do we mean by belief? She's quite eager. <laughs> He's smiling there in the Go on. Uh, you need to have the correct aqidah okay. of, uh, of Islam. Okay. Know what to believe and the wrong things, what not to believe. Okay, and if you don't have the correct aqidah, what's going to happen? Uh, then you're gonna, uh, you, you're not gonna be doing, uh, believe in the right things. So, okay. So, how? Okay, let's move on. So, next, uh, next door to Brother Shahid. If you've not got the correct akida, and you're going out there praying your salah, uh, you know, going out being good to people, is it gonna have any effect? No. No. Okay, that's fine. So, we understand. So, we believe the correct akida. That's fine. Now, another one from this side. So we've got one condition, which is belief. So uh, that's one out of three. The fiqh. The fiqh, okay. So do you want to explain, or the brother next to explain, what, why is that important? Why is the fiqh important? Number one, can you tell us what fiqh is? What is the fiqh? Thank you. You don't have to go into any thesis or anything, just a very simple explanation. Okay. It's how we do things. Oh, mashallah. Okay, how we do things. Okay. And why is that important? Because you have to do them the right way, the the way they're supposed to be done. Okay, my sure that's good. Okay, and so we got Akita, we got Fik, we got two more. Oh, well, I've done like a car up there. I'm not sure. Mashallah, wait till I see you done. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> right, go on, pass it on go to someone on. else. To. Uh, striving. Striving. You have to okay. put the effort in. Okay, mashallah, that's good. And uh, the last one, one more, so we've got fik, akida, fik, striving, and then there was one more. Yeah. yeah what, what, for forgiveness. Forgiveness. Okay. Forgive, but for the sins. That, okay. But what's toba though? If we say it's a toba, repentance. What is it? 
Well, what does it mean? So if someone says to you, no, uncle, uh, you need to do tawbah, I'm not saying it. <laughs> Just generally, a person needs to do tawbah, what, what does it... Well, basically, obviously, if you've done something wrong, and then you realise that you've done something wrong, then you have to say tawbah, uh, ask forgiveness for it. Okay, mashallah. So it's basically, it's, uh, it's forgiveness, isn't it? Okay, so... Tawbah is forgiveness. Oh, mashallah, I'd say 80%, there's one thing, is tawbah actually means repentance, to turn back to Allah. It's to make a U-turn. So when you've done something wrong, it's to actually turn away from that, Say, I'm going to go back to Allah. Then asking for forgiveness, that's then seeking forgiveness. So Tawbah, well, what this says is that the condition is whenever you go wrong, you always turn back to Allah. You always turn back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And um, one of the hadiths of uh, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is mentioned, and this is a hadith Qudsi where Allah speaks to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that is mentioned that in the hadith Qudsi that if my servant had sins up to the sky and they turned to me, I would still forgive them. Meaning, no matter how many sins you've got, no matter how many sins you've done, as long as you keep on turning back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah ta'ala will forgive you. This is the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That no matter what you do, no matter how bad, no matter how evil you think you are, Allah ta'ala's mercy is infinite. You can never out the mercy of Allah. So no matter what you do, you always turn back. And Hazrat Bakr related a hadith as well, that even if the servant sinned 70 times a day, 70 times a day, but seek forgiveness, Allah Ta'ala will forgive him. So this is why you should never lose hope in turning to Allah That's why it's a very important thing, because as human beings we're always going to fall, but it's very easy for us to think, oh, look what I've done, what's happened to me now? You know what, I can't do this, I can't do that, I can't, I can't. Remember that the mercy of Allah is infinite. The mercy of Allah Ta'ala is infinite. You're limited, not Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. So if you keep on going, Allah Ta'ala's doors are always open for us. Okay, so now that's the four conditions, the mountains of condition. So there was one more mountain. Remember what that mountain was? Objective. Well, it's your all outside. So these lot are on like high four, four points here. These lot are like up here at the moment, so go on. I don't know what the mountain's called, but one of them's um, preference to sunnah. Okay, so preference to sunnah. So what? Okay, let's because we want to get the mountain. It's very important. We know the mountain. So if you're giving preference to sunnah, sunnah, what is that? What are you doing? What is it? Objectives. Objectives. So it's the mountain of objectives. Okay, mashallah. So we've got the conditions. Okay, the four conditions, and now we've got the mountain of <coughs> objectives. Okay, so one was. Giving preference to Sunnah. Okay, what does that mean? I want a practical example. So just putting Sunnah first in it, or so just uh, okay. try but practicing Sunnah. Okay. Can someone give me a practical example from this side? So don't worry, you're still going to get the point, don't worry. Okay, okay, mashallah. What was that? Uh, uh, keeping the beard and okay. wearing the Imam Ashri. Okay, that's good, mashallah. And now, when we said the word preference, what do we mean by that? Uh, everything else. Okay, mashallah, that's good. Okay, so one is the preference to the sunnah. And now we've got... No, that's it, that's fine now. We've got to pick other people as well. <laughs> uh, now, another one. So, it's so number two. Was it reliance? Ooh. Four objectives. You had a few stairs at you there. So we've got one object preference. Oh, that's cheating, you can't do that. And I'm going to give you a chance warning, just one warning. <laughs> Preference to Allah, okay. Yeah. Now, what does that mean, giving preference to Allah? It's like I said, reliance. So, what does that mean? So, with everything you do, right, um, live in Allah's hands and completely rely on Allah for everything that is provided so for I'm, you. I'm going to ask your team members, do you agree with that team? Do you want to take that as your group representative? No, Uncle Iqbal saying no. Right, let's try the brother behind you. So, like for example, when Salah time comes, okay, you immediately go and give preference to Allah's command, and you pray without delay. Mashallah, yeah, Mashallah, that's correct. So, so one is one objective is the Sunnah. So the first objective is this objective that we give preference to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, the commands of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala above everything else. So reliance is one thing, but preference means that when it's the time, for example, to pray Salah, that we don't delay it for others. Rather, we delay others for Salah. So we're giving that importance to Salah, okay? The second is the Sunnah. Again, like he mentioned, 
you know, when it comes to dressing up, maybe we've got a function to go to, a family function, or we're going out with friends and you know, want to wear our Versace top or our Armani top or whatever it is, it's fine. But the thing is, what do we give preference to, that look, or do we give preference to the sunnah? This is what it means, giving preference. Okay? So then, second is a sunnah, not just in clothing, but most importantly in our actions. The way we deal with people, the way we use our bodily organs, our mind, you know, our heart. That is most important than the clothes itself. Obviously, the sunnah clothes are at a high, de high degree, but more so is our actions. Is that they're in accordance to sunnah. And now we've got two more left. So, is that, I can't see that. Oh, mashallah. Uh, compassion to creation. Mashallah, yes, that's correct. And what does that mean? Uh, basically. <laughs> The creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, you showing uh, mercy and I don't know, I don't know how to explain it. But okay, there's someone on this side, want to help him out. This corner is a bit quiet. They keep staring me out, but they don't want to speak to me. Go on, let's have this corner here. Um, basically showing compassion um, to the creation for the sake of Allah. Okay, could you give me an example of it? Uh, um, sh yes, yeah, smiling for, uh, smiling at, um, you know, a fellow human or, you know, forgiving them for the sake of Allah. MashaAllah. Okay, so, you know, smiling towards them, being good towards them, not causing oppression or any harm, you know, always trying to help the creation. Okay, so MashaAllah, that's compassion. There was one more final one. Anyone? <laughs> um, no. Being in the presence of Allah. Uncle, can you bless us with the what that is as well, please? Uh, like, for example, I'm trying to answer your question, but I'm also thinking of Allah. Mashallah. And what, what, what's the three keys? Could you just for, for Allah's, Allah's with me, Allah's watching me, Allah's listening. Okay, so mashallah. So we've got the two things now. So we know the conditions of the path, okay? So to, tr to, to sort of follow this path, we have to have these four conditions fulfilled. And we know our four objectives. And just all of you can say it. What's our ultimate objective? Pleasure of Allah. Pleasure of Allah, okay? So our ultimate objective is the pleasure of Allah. But to achieve that, we have to fulfill these four objectives, i.e. giving preference to Allah, preference to the Prophet Wasallam, compassion upon creation, and the uh, coming into the presence of Allah, SWT, always being in the presence. But then to start the path itself, then we need to have these four conditions. Okay, so are we clear on this? Is there anything that someone doesn't understand? This is just a recap from the last, now we can actually move on to the actual purification stage. Yep, so we're clear on that, yeah? Alhamdulillah, that's good. I'm still going to ask you later on about it as well. Right. So, inshallah, now we're going to go on to the heart. Okay, so we're going to go on to the first stage, which is the organs we mentioned. Okay, so let's just go back here. Um, so, like we mentioned, there's various sins which relate to the, 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 the organs. So, we've got seven organs the tongue, the ears, the eyes, the hands, the private parts, the stomach, and the feet. Yeah? And these are seven organs that we've got. But we look here, and we've said before that which has the most, which has the most in the tongue, yeah? So our job, and what, what we mentioned was just as a recap, is that as we go through life, first we're born like this, like this is our heart when we're born, everyone's heart is like this, they're pure, they're masoom, innocent. If a person, you know, is born as a Muslim or embraces Islam, then this is the light of Iman in his heart, he has this light of Iman. If not, then this is his heart. It's like this. He is always in ghafla, heedlessness, uh, not in the presence of Allah, not aware of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, when a person sins, as we mentioned, like any of them sins, this is what happens. It's a black dot comes on the heart. So, what we see is that basically the organs, the organs are like a gate to the heart. Okay? They're like a gate to the heart. And now, just to break it down for you, uh, I've just made this as interactive as possible so you know you don't get tired because you've got another session after this is I need eight volunteers to stand up to the front. So I know, I know I'm, I'm picking on you a lot today but I'll let Jabi do that. Go Amza, mashallah. Come on, we've got Amza. Get, give us eight volunteers. 
and it just just to come here at the front. Yeah, yeah, stand here. That's fine. Just here. Oh, inshallah, I've got a lot of shy brothers. Sure the Nelson brothers are not shy. Stop pretending you're shy. Go on, you two, Shahir and the other brother. <laughs> so how, how many have we got here now? We've got one, two, three, four. Jobby, you can be the eighth, yeah? No, I, actually, I prefer you as the eighth, yeah. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Is that seven there, yeah? Three, four, five, six. We're missing one. So, mashallah, Abdullah. I'll let you off now. I won't tell you, Dad. Right, now what I need you to do is, here, is stand in a circle, but hold your hands. So I'm going to show you. So stand in a circle and just hold it to the hands. But not you, Jabi, you stand out. Okay. So, yeah, so now, now Jabi, your job, now these are hands are short, okay? So now Jabi, try to go in the circle. Not going under, just walking in like this. So your job is not to let him in, to hold your hands. No. See, he, he, he can't get in. Yeah? It's not possible. <laughs> now, if they let go, drop your hands. Now, he can go in and, and he can do what he wants. Now, he can take that. So, so, so Jabby, Jabby's like this thief. Yeah? <laughs> no, I just even though. So, it's fine now, you can sit down. So, what I'm trying to show you here is, is that when their hands are short, they said Jabby was a thief. He can't get in. Yeah? He can't get in. Okay? But when their hands are open, it's very easy going to take what you want. And that is what our organs are like. Okay, when we do not purify our organs, or when we sin, that darkness, shaitan, we're allowing shaitan to enter in. I'm not saying Jabbi shaitan, but shaitan is like this thief. He's coming in and he's taking everything from our heart. And he's creating darkness in there. So what our job is, by purifying the organs, it prevents shaitan, shaitanic whispers, and this darkness to come into our heart. So this is the first stage of purification. See, now this is just showing that darkness. So, and as we mentioned before, when a person does do good acts, we think, right, the good acts surely should prevent, you know, sin staying in my heart. But when we don't purify ourselves, we're doing good, but it's like a leaking bucket. There's a hole in there. So that goodness is coming in, and it's, it's dripping out. It's dripping out because our organs are not purified. And another example I like to give is, if you've got contaminated water in a glass, Okay? It's contaminated. Now if you put more water in it, is that water still clean now? Just by pouring more in it? it do, no matter how much more water you're going to put in it, that water in that glass is always going to be contaminated, to some extent. So that's like us. When we don't purify our organs, we pray salah, we do dhikr, you know, we, we, you know, we go to remembrances, gather we listen to lectures. It's all light, light coming in, light coming in. But because we don't purify our organs, it just goes back out. And that's why, we, like we mentioned yesterday, we have that effect that, you know, on later that you feel really strong and then you go out and back to normal. Or 15 Shaban, you feel, or you go to a bayan and you feel like, that's it, I'm going to take over the world, I'm going to change my life, I'm going to be a superstar, I'm going to be, you know, an alim, a molana, you know, a friend of Allah, and 9 a.m. you just about get up for work. Back to square one, intention's gone, everything's back to normal. Why? It's because of this action is that we're doing, is that we're doing good deeds, but we're not protecting them good deeds. And like that, how we've seen in that example, shaitan's like this thief continues to taking all these precious jewels from our heart. So, now the question is, is how do we purify our organs? How do we purify them? What is the practical methodology to do this? Okay, so we start with the tongue. You know, as we've seen, the tongue has the most, has the most sins. Yeah? The tongue has the most, so we start with the tongue. And like we mentioned in the hadith, that the Prophet mentioned that if you can promise two things, what's between your jaw and what's between your legs, you're guaranteed paradise. That just shows you how much of a virtuous act it is just to protect your tongue. And you know, it's such, it's such, it's a such, you could say, uh, an organ that every other organ, for example, your hands, your feet, you know, you can harm people with them, but it's only temporary pain. But with the tongue, you can do permanent pain. That's how dangerous it is. One word could shatter someone's heart forever. Or one word could make so much love in someone's heart. So this is how important the tongue is. And that's why we have to try our best to safeguard it. So now, what do we do? So here's the sheet that you'll be given, okay? And these are the different disciplinary rules that we try to follow. So backbiting, slander, lying. We try our best to stop doing so. We look at this disciplinary. So 
we go throughout our day, so we'll have a look, we'll try our best, okay? So maybe then what we'll do is at the end of the night, we'll review this and say, okay, mashallah, okay, we've got a tick, so you'll tick. Okay, then day two you tick, day three you tick, day four you tick, and now you've ended up backbiting about someone. <coughs> so then what will happen is, you'll put a cross, day ten, okay? Or and whatever rule you violate, you write it then. Then you'll try again. Maybe you've gone for 18 days, double of that. You're improving, but then you get across. And then what you'll do is then you'll start again until you get the full 30 days. Then when you get 30 days, then a person will see a mentor and a star and they'll review your sheet and then you will and then you will go and then you will go on to the next stage. But the main thing is you need to remember about this is a cross doesn't mean that you've not succeeded. Even a cross means you've succeeded. Because what it means is you've realized what you've done. And if you want to correct something, the first thing you've got to do is realize what you're doing wrong. So even if you're just crossing, 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 it's not about, it means you're coming to realize, you're coming to realize, and it's the fact that you're getting up, and this is what you call striving. This is these sheets that is going to take you on this path. This is actually the practical part of it. So this is why it's very important that you get used to doing this day in, day out, day in. Because basically you're taking account before you be accounted for. Do you see this as your small accountability? You know, what do you do for, if you've got a business? You have your weekly accounts. You know, so you know what's coming in, what's going out. And why do we do that? Or we have our monthly accounts. Why, why do we take our accounts so important? So for those of you in business, who you own your own business, why do you take your accounts? Why is it so important that your accounts are done properly? What's one of that, especially for apnea, what's the main thing why our accounts need to be done properly? Anyone? Come on, Brother Ibrahim, you're a, you're a businessman. So, so that you keep everything up to date, like your income and expenditure? In the expenditure, there's one thing, one thing, tax. No one wants to pay excess tax. Nobody wants to pay it. You know, everyone wants to make sure. And because of that reason, because we don't want to pay so much, we think we've worked so hard for this money, why should we give that tax? So we make sure we do it properly, so we're not paying too much tax. Why do we do it? Because, because we don't want to pay that money, but what do we do? We keep account every week, every week. Religiously, some people even know their books without the paperwork. Top of their head, they like a machine. You know, they like a machine, they can work it. That's how this sheet needs to become. And you think that if I don't take, think to yourself, that if I don't take account now, then Allah Ta'ala is going to take account of me in the Day of Judgment. So what would you rather have? Yourself reviewing this now, or it being reviewed in front of millions of people on the Day of Judgment, on a huge screen? So just this simple sheet is what will help you change day by day. And like I mentioned, a cross, don't never get put down that, oh, I've got a cross, I keep crossing. This is still progression. This still, imagine if you've not been doing this all your life, it's not going to change in one day. You can't expect it to change. But the change that is happening is the fact that you're trying. The vehicle's moving now. The vehicle of change is rolling. So that day in day, and what you see, I'm telling you this from experience, that what you will find is the more you go to your sheet, you will begin to change. The day you leave your sheet, that's where your, your progress stops. So this is what we do. So we'll start with the tongue, and then, you know, day by day, you'll tick, tick, tick. If you do anything wrong, so you don't follow these, you'll put a cross. Yeah, not to worry, start again. Start again until you get 30 days, then you'll review it with the old start or with the mentor and they'll tell you to carry on. So is that quite simple? I don't, any, anything you don't understand about that? Yeah, is that simple, yeah? Okay, that's fine. So then, then, then what we do is, one is purifying the organs, and what we want to do is we want to replace it then with the sunnah, and then doing, enlightening the organs. So we want to remove the badness, but then we want to put light in the heart. And then what you do is then you start to use your tongue with tenderness. So when you speak now, you don't swear, you're not abusive towards people now, you know, you're merciful towards people, your tongue's very soft. When people speak to you, they should, they should feel, they should, they should say a person of Allah, when a person speaks to them, that they remind them of Allah and His Rasul. That's how your tongue should be now. Whenever a person speaks to you, you should remind Allah and the Rasul. You should bring some goodness in their heart. They should feel some sort of warmth with you whenever you speak. To use it to recite under the dhikr. When you're not speaking to people, you're communicating with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whatever way you're in the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not only speak when it's necessary to do that, not to waste the breath which Allah has given you. And now, every time you're speaking, you're conscious. Why am I speaking to this? 
is there benefit here? Not just sometimes it's sat just talking about football. Yeah, you, know, you have a social, but what's the point of it? Have a point of it. You're talking about football, but somehow relate that back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, you, you're having a chat with your friend, you're in a social circle, they don't really talk about Allah ta'ala. So maybe you start with football. You start talking about football, you get everyone's attention, slowly you drift it away. You know, for example, you know, for example, they've got so much money yet they have so much problems. Why is that? You know, just giving you an example. You drift the conversation. So you've got a purpose to your speech now. You're not just heedlessly talking. and Because what that can do also is take a place out of the presence of Allah. Use it to give nasiyah. So instead of gossiping about the lad next door, or this person did that, or at work this happened, or this person did this, you're advising people. You're telling people. You're bringing them to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Instead of taking them away from Allah, you're bringing them to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Always have a smile through hardship or ease. As the people shall see you, they shall see the way of the life of the Holy Prophet No matter what condition you're going through, people will also always benefit. And we've seen this in our Prophet No matter what hardship they went through, no matter what condition they were in, whoever would come to them, they would still always benefit them. Even the people who oppressed the Prophet ﷺ, they even benefited of him. And two examples I'll give you is the example of his blessed uncle, Hazrat Hamza The murderers who murdered Hazrat Hamza in such a vile way, he still forgave them. And they became Muslims and were people of paradise. Even to that extent, the Prophet ﷺ benefited. Even those people who harmed his blessed uncle, the people of Taif, who stoned the Blessed Prophet ﷺ to such a point where their blessed body was bleeding, and when Allah Ta'ala offered him to crush the place, he didn't do for their guidance. To such an extent. So this is what we need to represent and replicate, to, obviously to our own ex, to whoever built it. That's then what we, the person uses his tongue to do this, to represent the Prophet ﷺ in such acts like this. Okay? And then it's the same, same principle again. So this time, instead of, you look at, have I been following these rules or not? So, if I've not, then you put a cross. If, if not, then if you do 30 days, tick, 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 and then you move on to the next sheet. So, for example, then you try to use maybe the eyes in the correct manner. Okay. So, that's one channel. So, what you see is now, to say, to say you've completed that sheet, that's one channel blocked now, meaning that no darkness can come to that channel. So, now you see the effect on the heart by blocking one channel. The disease entering the heart is blocked. This minimizes the effect. So now what will happen, now you begin to feel that when you go to Salah, that effect is having a longer effect. It's lasting, it's having a lasting effect. Maybe not, till, maybe not all day, but you can feel it maybe for an hour, for a couple of hours. Now that's because you've, you've blocked one. And then what happens, and then for example, then there's another sheet. For example, the eyes. So now just say you go into the eyes, and you know, we know gazing opposite sex, watching lawful movies. So you, a person prevents, stops doing this. They get 30 days, then that's another channel block. So you keep on doing this until you block all seven organs. And now you see one by one the stream of disease of darkness of sin are blocked. So the heart remains clean and the effect of zikr and prayer begins to show itself. So now you will see the effects of the zikr. Now you will see how, now you feel that sukoon in salah, now you feel that sukoon after salah, when you're with people, you see that, and people will notice it in you as well. It won't just be, I pray salah, I feel good, now, now you, that effect will remain with you. And you'll do this until you purify all seven organs. So that, so now that's one, you can say, part of the bridge. This bridge is in four parts. That's the first part of the bridge. And that is actually the one that we're going to start today. Okay, so that's the first part. And then briefly, we're just going to touch on the next one, because inshallah, when you get to that stage, then the ustad or the mentor who, who will be guiding you or helping you, they'll go into more detail in that with you. So we're just going to go on a, just an overview of it, because really the most important one was the body, that we understood that. So just before I do move on to that, do we all understand that first first uh, section, yeah? Yes, Brother Hamza. Okay. Like Okay. So, yeah, so what I didn't mention is with the she, much is a very good question, is that if you intentionally do something wrong, then you put, if it's unintentional, then you carry on. So it just come out and you realize afterwards, but if you think, right, I'm going to swear at this guy, and you swear at him, that's a cross. But if you've said it, you realize, oh, I shouldn't have swore. It just came out. Because sometimes, for some people, the language is swearing. So it's just natural for them to swear. But 
the fact that you've realized that's good, so that might be your first. But if you've intentionally swore, like you're driving and someone's coming in front of you, you think, right, I'm going to give him a mouthful. You put your window down and you start giving it in big, right? That, that's a big, that's a big, big no no. That's a huge cross, okay? But if it just come out, someone's popped in front of you, you're just going, da 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 da. I think, oh, damn, I shouldn't have done that. Yeah, that's still a tick. Because it's unintentional. It wasn't intentional. It was subconsciously done. What you do intentionally, yeah, that is what will become a cross. Is that, is that understood, yeah? So I just gave them that example, like when I play football, right. if I miss a shot, unintentionally I'll say it's yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. My yeah. mentor said to do a, uh, to put a dot there and do, just do doorba, just to make sure I've recognised it. Yeah. Or, or something, was that necessary? Yeah, yeah, if your mentors mentioned that, then, okay. you know, so I'm just giving general, uh, but obviously mentors, if they're giving specific advice, then that's, okay. that's fine. Whatever your mentor is giving them, because uh, so obviously this is the general sheets, but Mentor will go based on the person as well, so that also can be di different as well. So do you move on to the second tongue sheet after you complete the first one? So basically, again, this is up to the mentor again. So what generally happens is, the, 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 generally speaking, is first we purify all the organs, then we enlighten all the organs. This is the general stage. So I'll, but I'll just showing you for what happens afterwards. So you go through your seven organs, then you then you go to that, or sometimes maybe you might do it at the same time. So it just depends again. Uh, on one's mentor on a start on on what gets guided. Okay. Any any more questions? No? Okay, so it's my time to ask questions. Okay, mashallah. Okay. So seven organs, brother uh, Hamza. Give us the seven organs. Tongue. Okay. Eyes. Okay. Hands. Okay. Feet. Stomach. Mashallah. Heart. <laughs> no, no, no. Um, he is. He is, okay. How many have you given me? I even, you I don't know, I've not been counting so, as well. There's so, so many counting besides myself. I've got about five. One missing. One missing. <laughs> don't take the doctor's advice. I've said tongue, <laughs> eyes, ears, hands, feet, stomach, privates. Mashallah. Good out okay? So that's the seven organs, yeah? Okay. Now, which one are we starting? Tongue, okay. Can you name me a sin off the tongue which we shouldn't do? Slandering. Slandering. Do, do you know, could you define slandering for me? Um, just talking bad about someone, you know, talking behind, uh, kind of like backbiting as well. Okay, now this is a very, very important thing now. Well, it's a good thing you mentioned that example. Can someone tell me the difference between backbiting and slandering? Slandering to the face. No. Back, uh, no. Backbiting is is when it's true and the person wouldn't like to like it to be said. Okay. And slander is when it's a lie, and you spread a ru like it's like a rumor yeah. about someone. Mashallah, you've been doing your sheets. That's very good, Mashallah. So yeah, very important. You know the difference. Backbiting is it can even be true. It can even be true, but if you know that person wouldn't like it, that's wrong. It's backbiting. And slandering is when it's a lie. Because sometimes we might think, oh, we're just speaking generally be about a person. Oh, you're right, he's put a lot of weight on. What's happened to him? He's let himself go. No, no, you. <laughs> he's let himself go. You know, he never used to be like that. But think to yourself, if I said that in front of him, would he like it or not? You know, it's very simple things like this that affect our heart. You know, so that's very important. So we're backbiting. Even if it's truthful, but you know you wouldn't say it to his face, then don't say it behind his back. And don't say to yourself, no, no, I would say it to his face, yeah? That's not reality, otherwise you would have said it by now, okay? So that's very important. So, okay, so we're clear with the organs, yeah? We're clear with that, okay? So one by one, we'll purify them, and then, then next, then we come on to the mind stage. So how does the mind stage work? So like we said, the tongue, eyes, ears, hands, stomach, private parts, and feet, okay? And then second stage is the mind. So negation of sins, then communion with Allah, the sunnah, du'as, and awareness. So first what we learn is how to get rid of the shaitanic whispers. You know, we heard of waswasa, we're all familiar with waswasa. Oh bro, shaitan made me do it. You know, shaitan put it in my mind. You know, that thing. So now you're going to learn how to combat that, so you can't use that excuse. Yes, yeah, so the, the verse is to negate. So anything that comes in our mind, to get rid of that. And then, it's then 
in your mind, building that connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, building that connection with the source, and then learning the correct du'as, and sort of reflecting on that, and then just being in total awareness of Allah and Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So we're just going to briefly go over that. So look, so how does this work? So evil thought appears in the mind. This is the route taken by a person who doesn't pay attention to the fact that their mind has been invaded by an evil thought. There is no reaction to the invasion, thus the evil thought takes over the mind. So what happens is, how does this work? How does the mind affect our behavior? So thought comes in. Now if we entertain that thought, it's like this black dot. It, it comes in. But then the more and more, so one is just by ent- just by entertaining, just think, okay, there's this thought coming in my mind. Not even dwelling on it, just entertaining it. You've allowed it to come in. Okay, now, now, now you start thinking about, now you begin to think about. It. So, for example, right? So, in your mind, yeah, maybe, you know, you're walking past NatWest and you think, you know, I wouldn't mind robbing NatWest. Yeah, it comes into your mind. So now, even now you walk and you think, yeah, you know, it's actually a good idea. So now this is what's happening. It's growing. It's growing. It's growing. Okay, person slowly starts thinking about the evil thought and allows the sparkle of evil to settle in the mind. So now, now you're walking home and you're thinking, right, I need to make a plan for this. I need to take a plan for this. And then what happens? The evil. So now he's inclined towards it. Now your heart feels it. You're thinking, yeah, do you know, what could I do with that money? You know, what holidays could I go on? You know, I've always wanted to go to Dubai with the boys. I wanted to do this. I wanted to do that. Yeah, the mind starts justifying the action now. It starts to justify it. And then it comes to such a point that now it's become to such an extent that unless you have very, very strong willpower, you're going to end up doing the action. Successful or not, that temptation, you're going to end up following it. And then that's basically how sort of the process. And basically, there you see then the mind is overtaken, the all descent, go rob not west, and you're on your way before you know it. So evil thought dominates the mind, and the mind orders the organs to carry out the evil thought. And but by this time, no matter what you do, that you've got no chance. You've got no. Ch- I'll give you an example, one way of, of explaining this. Just say uh, you've got a sparkle. You know, on bonfire now you have them sparkles. Yeah, you got a sparkle, and now you got a big fire. What's easy to put out? Oh. The sparkle. Why? Because it's very small. <laughs> blow is gone. Now, if you try to blow it on a fire in a bonfire, even fire brigades it takes them what, over two, three days. Even the next day, you still see the flame. This is what a thought is like. So what we want to do in this stage is get it while it's small. Get it while you can get it, while you can blow it out. Because as soon as it becomes like a fire, then it becomes very, very difficult. Unless someone is very, very strong or something. But most likely, 80-90% of the time, it's going to be like that bonfire. It's going to take a long time before it goes out of the mind. So, and then then that's, that's when a person's fully indulged in it. Now the person now indulged in that evil act, and now because of this, it's darkening his heart, it's darkening his soul. Now the, the root leading to salvation, now just, and then this is just to show you a technique, just to show you how this works. So what you don't do is, you don't fight the thought, you don't entertain it, okay? And you don't keep thinking about it, because even fighting, fighting is actually drawing the thought, because you've still allowed it to come in there, you see. So by fighting with it, you're still saying, oh no, I don't want to do it, I don't want to do it. But the fact is, you've let it, what we're saying is don't even let it enter. Don't even let it enter. What you do is, you divert the thought. So I'm just going to show you an example now. So everyone just close your eyes. So close your eyes, okay? So imagine, yeah, you're in a garden. A nice, beautiful garden. There's plenty of flowers. And on the side, you see a monkey just sat there. He sat there. Yeah, and he's just walking around, walking around, and now you see him go on a tree. There's a tree, he's starting to climb the tree. Now, on this tree, you see your favorite fruit, say it's an apple. Very juicy, it looks absolutely beautiful. And now you go towards the apple, and you're looking at the apple. It's got a beautiful, you know, texture on it. It's red, it looks really juicy. You touch it, it's very soft. It's got such a nice scent. Now open your eyes, where's the monkey gone? Where's the monkey? What was, in your, what was the last thing in your mind? The apple. So that's all you do. You just divert the thought. Very simple technique. So if we can do it with the monkey, I'm sure we can do it with sin. Yeah? I'm sure we can do it with an evil thought. That is literally all you do. And you can even use that. As long as it's something halal, you can divert it to that. So just say, shaitan says, okay, now look at that now, mehram. You think, no, instead I'm going to picture Medina. But even Medina, no, I'll picture a cheeseburger. It's fine. It's halal. Pref- obviously, the highest preference is Medina, is Allah, is Kaaba. But if it's, you're struggling and you just want to shift the thought, the main thing is shift it to something like oh, football. Nothing wrong with football. You know, 
you know, something comes in your mind, you, you know, like, right, what's the score? Or like, Liverpool lost, or no, Manchester United lost, they're not doing so well. You know, something like that, coming to, so you just shift the thought like we did then. That's the technique that you use. And then when a person does this technique, then it kind of like brings a barrier. So in the evil thought like this shows, this is the route which takes a person who wish to get rid of the evil thought from their mind. Two weapons are made available. So yeah, so the first thing is, is you seek refuge in Allah. So you say, you seek refuge in Allah, but the technique which I just told you, that is basically using your willpower to resist it. That is how you do it. You will divert, you will divert the thought somewhere else. Okay? And then at that time, that, that evil is crushed. The mind is free and any evil whispers, they're all gone. And what this does is, once this methodology becomes second nature, the more you practice, the more you practice, it becomes like a shield then. It becomes automatic. So as soon as a thought comes, you just divert it. It'll just come and it'll go, it'll come and it'll go, because your mind has become so accustomed to it. It's like how previously the mind would be accustomed to always indulging in the thought. Now it's become accustomed to not doing that thought. So it'll go away from it. And it becomes like a shield. So now once a person has got this shield, now a person begins to think about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Begins to think about Rasul And slowly, slowly begins to enlighten his mind. And now he's constantly, uh, where eventually the mind will be taken, is that he's constantly in the presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's constantly in the presence of Rasul He's thinking, what does Allah ta'ala want from me at this time? Like the brother mentioned that taqwa. He's establishing taqwa now in his mind. It's become like a shield. You know, what's Allah Ta'ala want from me? What does the truth Allah want from me at this time? Constantly, thus, these two things are on his mind. These two things are on his mind. How am I fulfilling the rights of Allah? How am I fulfilling the rights of creation? And he's always in the presence. Allah's watching me. Allah's with me. He's always like this. Eventually, that's how the mind then becomes. And now, he doesn't just think like himself. He even begins to think like the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Imagine that. That when you're sat, you're not thinking like anyone else, like the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That the thought of mercy is thinking, the way Rasul would help someone now, your mind is thinking like that, that I'm going to help them the same way Rasul Rasul helped them. Imagine having a mind like this, how beautiful that would be. You know, being generous like them, the thought of generosity comes into your mind. Helping people, having that soft loving nature, and then that sort of the thoughts of that coming into your mind and developing and you're supporting a person. So imagine walking around like that for the rest of your life with that sort of personality. So that is what is there to, to develop, okay? The mind is constantly with Allah and the Prophet says, now good thoughts are developed in the mind and is trying to please Allah the Exalted. So now this is just showing you how you do it. It's a negation of sin and it's sort of the same technique again. You'd carry on, carry on, carry on. This just show you, obviously when you get to that stage, then inshallah, then a, a person will, you know, with their mentor, they'll go through. Then the third stage, so that's the mind stage, then you've got the heart. So now the heart, so what you do is, it's now for example, so what we're talking about is basically traits like sincerity, humility, and repentance, and gratitude. So you want to develop these traits in your heart. You want them to be consistent, okay? And then this is, so basically just, just as a little brief, just going to talk about it. So that's what you're doing in that stage. And you will be given one sheet from this stage, which is the sincerity sheet. With the sincerity sheet. And it's very, very important that all actions are done with the right intention. Because just to relate a quick story, the, about there's three people on the Day of Judgment that will come, okay? One will be an alim, one will be a, a, a mujahid, the fighter, someone fought in the way of Allah, other will be one a person who gave charity. All three will come and say, oh Allah, I've done this for you. I sacrificed my life, I sacrificed my time to become an alim in your way. Allah Ta'ala say, throw him in hellfire. Then the charity person will come. Ya Allah, I donated so much money. I did so much for the cause of charity. I, I, I helped as many people as I could. Allah said, throw him in hellfire. Then the third one will come. The Mujahid said, Ya Allah, I fought in your way. I sacrificed my life. I sacrificed my blood in your way. Allah said, throw him in hellfire as well. Why? Because none of them did it for Allah. So they all did it for themselves. Because they were not sincere to Allah. They did it for fame, they did it for name, they did it. So people would think, oh, look at these people. Look how amazing they are. They did it for their own power, for their own status. Yet they did such high level acts. You know, the person who fights in the way of Allah or dies a shaheed has no accountability in the day of judgment. Look at that. No accountability in the day of judgment. They would be like, they would be like birds flying under the arsh of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Look at that. Yet just because his action wasn't sincere for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, straight into Jahannam. So all, 
these people all their life they've been doing these things thinking they're pleasing Allah Ta'ala. Thinking that. All their life, they spent all them years to come on the Day of Judgment and be thrown in the hellfire. Now ask yourself, do you want to be that kind of person? So this is why you be given the sincerity sheet. To make sure that everything we do is for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And not an ounce of pride or arrogance or any of this sort of thoughts or like, oh yes, I'm doing it for myself or anything like this. Because ultimately, it is Allah ta'ala who has given us everything. So in return, it's our job to do for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay, but obviously we'll go on to that when you get your sheet. Okay, so basically what happens then is so a person purifies their so basically they purify their heart. So the heart, for example, we try to achieve these sort of qualities, sincerity, humility, but on the counter you're trying to remove qualities such as jealousy, arrogance, pride. Yeah, that they're the qualities first you try to destroy, and then finally you're trying to implement these qualities. So you start by doing the sincerity sheet. So once a person has does has done this, then wh- how you know you achieved them, how you know you've done that methodology correctly is now we mentioned about the four objectives a person will now begin to achieve these four objectives he will see it practically in his life now it will be like second nature to him it will be just the normal way of going like we're saying whenever he goes to work he's always looking how do I obey Allah's command in here how do I obey Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam how do I make sure I'm helping the creation at work Am I in the presence? You'll always be in the presence with work, with family. And how you will notice is the people will notice. There'll be a difference. You know, if you're at home, one of the hardest things, you know, your wife says this, your wife says, your spouse says that, you have shabr, sabr, 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 it comes to a point and snap. That should change. That will begin to change. You know, if someone asks for a report, how's your husband at home? What's he like? She should be smiling, saying, mashallah, he's a top guy. But if it's like this Mulvi, Oh, what, what can I say? Then you know that you've not achieved it. Yeah? So basically all comes into his life. And then this is just the non-objective. So what could happen on this path like we're seeing is dreams, miracles, feelings, visions. Now this is a very, very important thing you need to get in your mind. Is that all of this under the spiritual experience is all well and good. But really it's a motivator. It's not the objective is to increase your iman and your keen Allah Ta'ala so you become more steadfast on the path. It itself is not the objective. Very important thing. Ultimately, through all of this, of the ultimate pleasure Allah Ta'ala, but practically, these are the four objectives. This is the goal in mind at all time. These four are your go-to at all time. Now, if you're seeing visions and you're, you're having spiritual experience, but you're not doing these four, know you're on the wrong path. Know you're on the wrong path. It's very simple. It doesn't mean anything. But if you're not seeing visions and you're achieving this, know you're flying on the path. You're flying on the path. So that's why sometimes I feel, oh, why am I not seeing this? Oh, he's seeing this. Yes, it's a good motivator. Alhamdulillah. But if you're achieving this, it doesn't matter. The main thing is, is that you're getting this. This is the main thing. And like I mentioned, if you're not achieving this, then then visions has no benefit to you at all. Your spiritual has no benefit at you. If it's not taking you back to these four things, then it's not benefiting you. So, none of these dreams, miracles, feelings, visions. And no, we're not. And one thing our teacher says, we're not Abdul feelings, we're Abdullah. What does that mean? Is that we don't just pray Salah because we feel like praying it. We pray because the command of Allah. That is what it means to be an Abdullah. No matter what you feel, no matter how hard it is, no matter how difficult it is, you still follow Allah Ta'ala. No matter what. Sometimes you feel like zikr, sometimes you don't. That means then you're Abdul feelings. You're only the person who does it when you feel good. That means you're not sincere. True sincerity is when no matter what condition you're in, no matter what ahalat you're in, no matter how ill you are, what's good, you've got one arm, one leg, whatever condition you're in, you're on your hospital bed, when it's coming to fulfill the farads, you fulfill it. Even on your deathbed, you pray salah. That is sincerity, that is it. So we're not Abdul Fina, again, miracles, dreams, it means nothing. If it's not taking to Allah, Allah it means nothing. And then fourth stage, like we mentioned, is the enlightenment of the soul, where then, basically now, in this place, by the grace and mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, so now you've done all of this, and through the acceptance, like I said, and I said it at the beginning as well, all these actions are good, but ultimately don't rely on these actions. It is Allah's pleasure, mercy, and this forgiveness that will allow us to get His pleasure.
These are the, these are the keys to get there, to open the door of mercy, to open the door of forgiveness. But ultimately, it's when Allah Ta'ala is merciful on us and He forgives us, only then we'll achieve His pleasure. And this is the same on the Day of Judgment. Not a single person will enter paradise without the mercy of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And secondly, nobody will go into paradise without the Prophet Sallallahu entering first. Them doors will not open without the Prophet Sallallahu entering first. So without the mercy of Allah Ta'ala, no, so this enlightenment, so when a person does this, this will open the doors of the mercy, meaning then the person has reliance on Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala and reliance on the mercy, not on himself. So all these amals, he doesn't rely on them. He relies solely on the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then, you know, with humbleness, with sincerity, he never attributes and always feels that no matter what deed I do, it's never enough. It's never enough. It's never enough. And in fact, the more closer he gets to Allah, the lower he feels. The lower he feels. Because what, what's happening, the closer he's getting to Allah, the more he's understanding about Allah. And the more he's understanding about Allah, the more low he realizes he is. It's only natural that's going to happen. Because the more, because it's a lot of the knowledge of Allah is infinite. So it only makes you realize how small you are. And then ultimately, then this will allow us to achieve the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then what do we do after that? Do we just Ramnal sit down and think, Chalo, won't you get that? That's it. I'm done now. Allah Dewali is finished. No. Dawah. Now you do what the Prophet did is now you go and preach others, you bring, that's a right that the people have on us. That is the right knowledge has on us. You know, when does information become knowledge? Is when you practice it and you preach it. Otherwise it's just information. There's a hadith about that. It's just like a, a donkey carrying books. If you just have knowledge in your mind, you don't, it's just like a, a donkey carrying books. There's no benefit, it's just there. So then, the right of that knowledge, the right of the creation, the right of the Prophet ﷺ is that the guidance we receive is that we teach it. And that we bring others to this path as well. And we show them the way to, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because we will also be questioned that with all of this that you've been given, what did you do with it? What did you do with it? Okay? And that is basically your journey. And, and that bottom is just showing that here, yeah, this bit is very important as well. This bit is that in this journey, you will have times. You know, it's not, obviously, it sounds nice now. Reality is, you are going to have struggles. You are going to, everyone's got some weakness. Everyone's got something, some demon that they struggle with. It's not that it's going to be all nice and, you know, everything. And that's why you see some mountain, it's tough. It, it's tough, it requires hard work. But as long as a person, you know, for example, remembers these things, his period of where he came from, where he's going, the reality of dunya, continuously comes to majlis, continuously doing his five amals, he will eventually become successful. And even if he doesn't achieve the pleasure and finishes the path, but he's trying, he'll die as though he did. So don't think that, oh, I'm not reaching this level, I'm not reaching that. If it's just the tongue you're doing, but every day you're trying, you're trying, you're trying, you're trying, and you die like that, then no, it's as though you're successful. That is as long as you're trying. Not just, you know, half hard, as long as you're trying. So this is the path, I think we're going to have five miles. Should we, should, should we go over the five miles then? Yeah? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So now, like I mentioned, we're just going to quickly go over the, well, you've already gone over them to be fair. Um, so, you see, put your hand up. Has anyone seen this before? Yeah. You know, well, everyone's hand should be up to be fair. I'm worried if it's not. Because who went through this with you? Does anyone remember? Okay, mashallah. So for that very reason, I need someone to volunteer and explain to me how to do the dhikr. Uh, Nasser, mashallah, you were very confident. Uh, <laughs> we'll go on this side. We'll give him a chance. You know, you know the other day. Go we'll give him a chance. Go on, brother, over there in the back. Mashallah, you, you had a confident nod. Yes, mashallah. Come on, give him the mic, please. Can you? Oh, go on, is it fine? Oh, so whatever, so whatever, whatever is easier. Go on, brother. Do you start the la from the la ilaha illallah? Okay, in fact, you know what? I don't mean to put you on the spot. Why don't you come and show everyone how to do it? Go on. At least, if who doesn't know, they know. You know, at least it'll build your confidence as well. So someone asks you on the street, you go, no, but this is how you do it. And you can show it to them as well. Go on. So we're showing you how to do dawah now as well, mashallah. So you start at the stomach, the la, from the la ilaha illallah. Before that, preparation, how do you prepare for the zikr? Yeah, bring the three keys into your mind okay. in the presence of and Allah. Okay, and before that, one thing we have to remember. 
I don't know. So, what, why are we doing the zikr? Pleasure, Pleasure of Allah. Intention, yeah? Intention. MashaAllah. So, intention, what was that? Three keys. Three keys, and then? You start okay. the zikr. Okay, so the, let's start the zikr methodology. The la in the stomach. Okay. You bring all the bad that you have okay. in the stomach, and then you extend the la up to your mind. Okay. Where, and then all the, the ilaha in your mind, you expel all the sins and all the thoughts and all the bad stuff. Okay. And then you bring it to your heart, okay. illallah. Okay. And then your heart chants illallah. Okay, mashallah. So that's, that's a good explanation. Just, uh, mashallah, that's fine. for that. You can sit down. So basically, like the brother mentioned, so we start from here. So we close our eyes. We imagine that all the darkness is here, like exactly how this picture is. We mentioned then, so whatever the dark, whatever the evil, whatever it is that's taken away from Allah SWT, we imagine it's all here, gathering here, it's coming up. So when we're saying, Ilah, we're letting go, we're saying, Ya Allah, I'm going to leave this with you. You are the one who's going to change me. You are the one who's going to, only, I, I'm too weak, only you can help me. We're going to release it. Imagine the name of Allah is in front. And then when we say, Illa Allah, that the light from the name of Allah is coming down straight into our heart and enlightening all our body. And then we do that again. Yeah? So do you want to do a little quick practice? Or are we okay with that? Does anyone need to do a practice or are we okay with that? If anyone wants to do a practice, practice run, yeah? So okay, so like this, so we start, so everyone close their eyes, head down. Actually just watch myself first, just to show you, then we'll do it together. So like this, head down. Then from here you'd say, La, like this, Ilaha, and so, Illallah. So you might La, Ilaha, Illallah, like this. Yes, you don't need to go left right like that yeah that doesn't do any benefit i'm sorry to smash but it doesn't do any benefit the main thing is the mindset is the mindset okay so now we'll do it together inshallah so don't just do the action but keep this in mind so la ilaha illallah la ilaha illallah okay has everyone got that because it's rubbish i don't want to go into too much start a zikr session is that is that fine yeah is, has everyone got that, yeah? Is that easy? Because the reason why I'm asking this is because you're going to take this away. So you need to know it for yourself. That you can follow that methodology easily without any difficulty. Did anyone have any difficulty following this methodology? Yes, go on. You will ask the zikr. So I'll do the la ilaha. Then I get stuck sometimes to imagine the Lord's name. Okay. So I feel like... Um, I have to stop. Yeah. Uh, ilaha, think of so, Allah's name, then carry on. So it's not consistent. So it's like stop. La ilaha. So it's not. So as long as you're the presence of Allah, the awareness of the name of Allah is in front. That's the main thing. If you can't see or not, it's not that. But the main thing is that the awareness, the presence, that you're letting this go to Allah, and then there's light coming. So even yeah. from the thought, just think about the light and feel that. But is it, is it supposed to be? Like continuous. Yeah, so just so like, like la ilaha illallah. Yeah, but or is that's, it, yeah, so uh, you, like when I normally do it, like la ilaha illallah. That's fine. But obviously, you want to. You want it to be consistent, don't you? Yeah, but that's fine. If that's the way it helps you, soon, once you get more used to it and used to it, the main thing is that you're focusing on these three things that yeah. the, the darkness is in the heart, the darkness is going, and then. From the name of Allah, or Allah Ta'ala, that the light is coming into your heart and you're doing it again. As long as you're following this process, no matter how long it takes you, it doesn't really matter. But the main thing is, is that you're following the process and that you're connected to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala and that you're in the presence of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Yeah. That is the main thing. That is the main objective. That you're feeling the presence of Allah, that you're removing this filth and this darkness out of you and that you're feeling that closeness of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. So, so is it key to think of the, of the darkness? Yeah, the process, is, this, this mindset is very important. Very important. Yeah. Not so much the imagination, but the, the, the being in this mindset that the darkness is coming, it's going up, and then the light is coming down. Just the, even if you can't, but to think about it is very important. And then also yeah. being in the presence of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Okay, so we all know how we start with intention for the pleasure of Allah, and obviously Bismillah Rahman Rahim. Then the three keys: Allah's with me, Allah's hearing me, Allah's seeing me. Then you come into the, to the presence. Then obviously you do the three preparation amals, which is Bismillah Rahman Rahim. Astaghfirullah three times, Dru Sharif three times, any Dru Sharif, and then La Hawla Wa La Quwwata La Billah three times. And then refresh the presence and then start your dhikr. But you should be familiar with that now because we've been doing that for four or five days. So you should be uh, familiar with that, with that, um, sorry, with that sort of preparation or that routine. Is everyone okay with that? Yeah? 
So just before we finish off, brother, can you just, in a list of how to do it, could you just list it to me? So the whole zikr from star, from A to Z. Okay, we missed A, they went to B. So you make the intention. MashaAllah. Okay. Should be there anyway. Okay, MashaAllah, MashaAllah. You make the intention, then uh, you read the amal. Oh, someone got caught out there. Three keys, yeah. Three keys, yeah. Um, and then start the zikr. Start the la within the stomach. Okay. And bring la ilaha and bring it down. La in your okay. heart. MashaAllah. Okay, does anyone else want to have a go just to make sure they know it or are we familiar, are we confident with that? So now we can go away. So when I say confident, I mean you can go away now, sit here and do that zikr and you want to think and get confused. Go on, last question, go on, with shorter yeah. time. What, what is your next start to eat when you're doing that? So can you do it? Put a cushion just, there. No, no, but say you're going up like that for 20 minutes. Well, well, next? This is what I mean, don't go crazy. You don't need to go crazy. Like I said, first thing, do not go crazy. Ramnal, just like that. You're watching too many YouTube I will, yeah, yeah. I, will, yeah. I, I got brought up in next Bandi yeah, yeah. Do you know when you could do Zikr? No, Ramnal, that's a blessing as well. That also is a blessing. But our Trika is a bit different. Obviously, every Trika has a methodology. So we don't follow that method. Our methodology is just more about focusing on the mindset. You know? So just think about the mindset. You don't have to, even if you don't do much of that, that's fine. Just focus on the mindset. Um, so that's that. So just, and then obviously the Muraqaba, you much have start Zafar explained that beautifully to you. So you don't have any issues with the Muraqaba. And Ustaz Kess even has been doing that with us. So you do this zikr for 20 minutes every day, okay? Every single day. Now, 20 minutes is the aim. If you're struggling and you think, oh, 20 minutes, uh, I don't want to do it now, well, at least do a minimum of 10 minutes, five, 10 minutes. At least do it. You don't, you don't go and start with this. It's 20 minutes is what's prescribed to you. You need to do 20 minutes. That's where it's going to have the benefit. The less you do, the less effect it's going to have on you. That's the reality. But it's better than doing nothing. You need to do it. So get it in your head. 20 minutes is the aim. But if I can't, at least do 5 to 10 minutes. But daily, this has to be done. It's a must. It's like your bread and butter. It's your spiritual food. It's like, mashallah, a lot of brothers, good physiques, mashallah, you, a lot of you must go to the gym. If you don't have your protein, you can lift as much weights as you want, you're going to plateau. Is that correct? Yeah? If you don't have the sufficient protein to have, you're going to plateau. You're going to only lift about 30 kg, 40 kg. You just go there doing the same thing over and over again. That's what's going to happen to us. We're just going to go in the same cycle over and over again. This is your spiritual food. You need it every day. If you want to spiritually progress, and this is your spiritual nutrition. So have this like it's your, your bread and butter. This is what's going to give you the energy then to go away and do them sheets. Okay, and then obviously you've got the muraqaba and the sheets, inshallah, we're going to give them that today as well. So you're going to practically get your sheets as well to start, inshallah. So, inshallah, I think everyone's okay with that. If there is any questions afterwards, by all means, you can ask myself. Better than asking me is to better ask the stars as well. So, jazakallah for that. Subhanakallah. If you have got any questions, Ustad Saraj Mahmoud is the expert. So do go to him, inshallah. Um, there is a gift for new participants. Uh, when I close the session on Zoom, inshallah, you can collect off me for the brand new people only. There's a, a card for the people who have been here before, just to sort of tell you about the five amals. If I've got enough cards, I'll give that to everybody here as well, inshallah. So just for now, we will uh, have a break, and then the next session will be in uh, 4.40 about 15 minutes time inshallah so just for now we'll break for a uh, for a short while and be back at 4:40 subhanakallahu wa bihamdika ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik this waiting comes with trials and challenges Nothing in life is free My Lord, show me right from wrong Give me light, make me strong I know the wrong, but it is long Make me strong Sometimes it just gets 
लाखों दरुदर लाखों सलाम लाखों दरुदर लाखों सलाम जिन्नो मलाइक तेरे गुलाम जिन्नो मलाइक तेरे गुलाम लाखों दरुदर लाखों सलाम इतना I know I'm waiting, waiting for something, something to happen to me. This waiting comes with trials and challenges Nothing in life is free My Lord, show me right from wrong Give me that, make me strong I know the road is long Make me strong Sometimes it just gets
nothing to happen to me But this waiting comes when trials and challenges Nothing in life is free My Lord, show me right from wrong Give me that make me strong I know the wrong, but it is long Make me strong Sometimes it just gets to लाखों सलाम लाखों दरुदार लाखों सलाम जिन्नो मलाइक तेरे गुलाम जिन्नो मलाइक तेरे गुलाम लाखों दरुदार लाखों सलाम इतना करम तो करम तो फरमाइए रोज़े पे सब को बुलवाइए हाज़िर यहाँ है जितने गुलाम लाखों दरुद और लाखों सलाम Lock on. 